But yeah, man, welcome back to the Snake Trap Sessions. I am so excited to be back. Legends, all pulling up to Canova for the first time. What is good, everybody? It's your boy MJ up in the building. Welcome back to another episode of the Snake Trap Sessions vlog. This is your first time tapping in. What is good? Do your boy a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, be a part of that notification gang. That way you're on top of every single vlog I drop here on the Snake Trap Sessions vlogs YouTube channel. But Matt, I am in Georgia, baby. I'm at the Canova facility, but it's just not your average visit. I'm tapped in with some legends in the hobby that have never been here before. This is gonna be one amazing vlog and that's for a fact. So why don't we tap in? Why don't we say hi to some of the legends that are here right now and let's get this vlog started. Chee! This is crazy. Justin, are the keys in the car? Are the keys in the, I'll be back. <laughs> been going oh you look like you just been taking little naps so this is blaze guys if you guys don't know who this guy is he's the mascot of canova there's not one loose rat even touching any groundage in this facility because of the man blaze love you blaze you're the man mershon in the f***ing building what's up player how are you shout out my boy mershon morse you're no stranger to this place right no, no. Since you know one of the things that brought you here to Canova is you, you you did some kind of car business with Justin, yep. right? Now, I mean, I gotta ask you, how long have you been tapped into the car business for? Forty three years. Forty three years. Mm -hmm. And as much as the uh, the car business is a part of your life, how are the how are the snakes going? For anyone who follows you on Instagram, tell us real quick how the ball pythons are going right now for you. Excellent, excellent. Everything's going really well. Um, should be a good year. Let's see what happens. You know, I mean, it's been consistent every year. What show do you plan on attending this year? October Tenley, March Tenley. And you'll be, and you actually bend at Tinley, correct? Yeah. And you're always right next to Justin. Right. And that's gonna be the same case this year, right? Correct. So if anyone wants to see what you have working with, best thing they could, get, they could do is pull up to Tinley and you see your booth, that's right? That's right. Fuck okay, yeah, that's my boy Marshall. No, I know, I know. We got Canova Jr. in the building. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Okay, so real quick, I gotta ask you, how does it feel to have somebody like Justin being part of something like this, be your dad. I mean, is it snakes 24 seven or like, how's your life really? I gotta ask. I think it's really balanced. Uh, he does a good job balancing it out. Yeah. 
This is a black dragon? Uh, what is going on here? What do we have here? Hi. There's literally a loose black dragon cruising around the, the Canova facility. I gotta check this out. Come on. Wow, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> this is so awesome, man. It's crazy how light she got. Like, you know, kind of. in bills, you know? That's not fair. And then this was the. Uh, um, yeah. This is the one you were, you sibling to one that you have that your present picture It looks very, very Yeah, it's, yeah it's, wow. it's starting to kind of change and wow, do some so weird stuff. stuff. Justin, overall Conjo experience has been what so far? Please tell me. Very negative. I gotta get back to you. <laughs> Please don't say this. They're super easy. I always thought they would be hard and biting and all the things I was going to say. amazing. Definitely doing things the right way by picking it up from some iconic people. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Good caging, good, good animals and good people. Can't go wrong. All the big check marks are checked. So you have productions from Bill Stiegel. You have productions from Gary Shavino. And then Marshall Mendez is going to be next. <laughs> What's this right here, Summer? Break this down. This is a very squirmy uh, cake file snake. Wow, this thing is neat looking. I've yeah. never seen this before. You gotta pin their head. Why don't you pin their head to your body and they feel like, oh, they can't see me now? Yeah. Then they chill. You they just feel their body. It's just wild. Safe. They just want to feel safe. You don't really get snakes like that. Yeah. yeah. This is, yeah. This is kind of, this not, this not On the next level, yeah. yeah. So Summer, you've been working with a lot of diversity here in Canova. Yes. What's it been like, you know, kind of taking over some projects that maybe Justin doesn't have a lot of time to work with it's, right now? It's fun. I enjoy it. I love kind of getting to do something different. I love the ball pythons, obviously, but it's fun to kind of come in here and see a snake on a stick or a, a crazy triangular file snake. Um, I love working with the different species. I love the bullets, obviously. So yeah, it's been a really great great time getting to kind of branch out a little bit and build this up some overall experience worth the chondro so far i don't want to jinx it myself um right. but and i do have snake experience it's a little hard to say but i mean once you have the parameters right it seems like it's kind of kind of easy a lot easier than a lot of people say anyway you know it's not as daunting and terrifying as i don't know it seems like it's a little bit of a myth that they're well, super as far super, as that they're impossible to keep and yeah whatnot. that they're just gonna like kill over and die well, especially if you get quality captive red animals and set them up right to begin with and I feel yeah. like what you said as far as finding a solid foundation to work off of and I, and what has been some help for you? Like what, what has been like something that you've been able to like go to to get information or like what, what's actually been helping you out? Really just making connections with the, the breeders, like making sure that you buy from somebody who's going to be responsive and going to be there to give you some tips. Like the first, when we first, uh, the first one that we got had a bad shed the first time with us. So I was able to reach out to Bill who we got her from and he gave us some tips and after that we just been rocking and rolling. So yeah, I would just say it's really just about, you know, finding good people to have connections with and, and buy from and they'll be there to support you. Look at like, what do you think of the Bolin's python? Oh, it's the, it's probably the nice, cool, coolest looking thing. So this is your favorite for sure. It's up there. It means you have good taste, my man. Uh, high end. <laughs> high, high, high end. Taste. Very high end. Yes. What's that thickness? Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. You're just so impressive, unicorn. man. I just, yeah, absolutely love it. The unicorn. Yeah. Some people think that you just you should breed a little smaller in order to be successful. Be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do this. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. And then I've got to show you a picture of the animal. You got it? I'll put it Hey, buddy. Enjoy your day. Have a good day, dude. These males get big. Yeah, they they could be just as big as a female.
I got these in San Diego, but not, I don't, they're green. Whoa. Damn, you're into insects too, Justin? I love insects, I always have. He looks otherworldly. Are you kidding me? This is like out of Predator. No kidding. Oh my god, look at that thing. That wobble too. Yeah. These little dance. And where's this from? Where, where's this? I don't know. I was gonna want to say Chinese. They're Chinese, but I'm not sure. No, Justin, when you were telling me the other day, why did they these little wobbles and like the stuff? It's, stock? it's because they're trying to mimic like leaves <laughs> fluttering in a tree. In, in the tree, like in the wind. If they're perfectly, if they're perfectly still and everything else is fluttering yeah. around, they yeah. they're a target. You can see a lot of ball pythons that are amazing. Not me. Our employees are a fan base. We're much different. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, man. No, this could be for. Welcome to the chocolate factory. So Justin, I have to ask you, what is it like to have three of the biggest non-ball python like icon in, in your facility right now? Yeah, I gotta say, <laughs> I'm not used to this. Okay, mm -hmm. now guys, I have to ask you, what does it feel like to be in Justin's place? I mean, I love it. I'm at a loss for words, that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. And Gary, how you feeling, Gary? I just love it, man, I love it. I very jealous, I just, I could see this whole thing filled with condos, I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> All the adults are on this wall over here. These are all the breeders on this side. Um, the females are on the outside, and the males are just the four racks in the middle. So they can kind of go in and out for a while. Males on the side, females are right so Marshall, you're you're pretty like low key with your collection, meaning like you don't have anything to this extent production wise. But how would you feel to have something this much under your belt? Is it overwhelming? Like let's say you didn't have the full time gig that you have now. No, it'd be awesome. Yeah, especially if you had the good 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 uh, people helping you. See how you can make it work. All right, so I had some haters on my bumper trying telling me that Freedom Breeder racks accumulate rust, and one of these haters. I can't call him a hater. He's my boy. Shout out to the homie. I get to say his name and embarrass him. But the homie here tried telling me that these Freedom Breeder racks that Justin have here are rusted. And if you look closely, that ain't rust. It's cocoa chip. It's the dust. Freedom Breeder's the shit. Freedom Breeder's the number one snake breeder rack in the game. There's no rust on these racks. Don't ever disrespect the Freedom Breeder crew ever again. Andrew? God. Oh, oh yeah, wow, look at this beautiful. microphone. Yeah. AEP DG Clown. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. It's a big animal. It's a mass. Yeah. How many grams is something like that, Justin? About 3,000. 3,000 yeah. for sure. I don't like having to sneak that size in this tub. Yeah. Yeah. Moved her a couple times. She always goes off feet. So yeah, we're right. Yeah. Our new Krakens. What are, we, what are we looking at here? All right, so this is uh, for your eyes only, or as long as this comes out after we make a video about it. No respect. <laughs> <laughs> but this is uh, the Kraken 2.0 Sire Disc Clutch. And it's the first clutch that he's, he sired one before it, but it was to, um, just to make heads. So it's the first visual clowns we've oh gotten from him. Oh my God, look at these, dude. You gotta be shitting yeah, me. Yeah, and so this one we actually think, or I say we, Justin actually thinks is a Kraken 2.0 with disco added. So it's all the genes from the male and the, it was bred to a disco um, head clown. So it's a disco Kraken 2.0. And then, yeah. Then same thing, but without black pastel. Bro, this is insane. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that makes the calendar summer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, it better. Oh, Look at yeah. this one. And then Look this at one's that. got Look an awesome that ringer. ringer yeah. Wow. So that one's missing GHI. Right. So these have GHI in it. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't. Yeah. And the GHI is what makes the Kraken help make the Kraken? Is GHI in the Kraken? Yeah, GHI is in the Kraken. And it, it's one of the things that makes like the pattern so small, kind of like and, and wiry a little bit. Right. You can see the difference. Breaks like, it up. That versus that, just how like skinny it kind of makes the pattern. See, this is a really great example of GHI in that thing. Wow. Um, but yeah. 
amazing. I'm assuming they just had their first shed, right? These they look just, very fresh. Yeah, they just had their first shed a few days ago, so very fresh. So you have your hands on so much stuff happening here at Canova. I mean, do you feel overwhelmed sometimes on like stuff you favorite the most? I mean, because you you know you have the condros that you're getting dialed in, you have a super dwarf project that you guys are just coming across, and you have all the ball python. Like you're you're tapping into more stuff, not not the average person can keep up with. So I'm. Like, how are you keeping yourself sane? I'm just curious. Um, I come in here mostly every morning and I look at all these babies and I try to figure out what's in them before Justin tells me. And then I ask Justin what's in them and then I compare with what I thought and kind of use that as like a learning opportunity right. to try to kind of get a better grasp because like you said, there's just so many genes. It's really hard to take it all in. Um, how, often yeah. do you, how often do you and Justin kind of brainstorm? Like, is it every day or what would you guys say? Like, how I often mean, do you guys kind of go back and forth? If by brainstorm, you mean I pick his brain. <laughs> he tells me exactly. things, right, right. then yes, daily, daily. Okay. Yeah. Which is the smartest thing to do. So yeah, props to you sure. on that one, Summer. Awesome. Anything you open here is a house payment, if, if not more. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious. Wow, look at this one. Leopard confusion. Leopard confusion. Yellow belly lavender. Oh, this one. Black pastel, red stripe, yellow belly. Yeah, the other two that's yeah, on there. Wow. That's, that's crazy. crazy. That's the triple recessive. That's crazy. Girl. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah, oh, oh, so that's the key. You're talking about that's a problem. I see. Okay, I took that one. Yeah. You're double hat, hat stuff like you're building your recipe. Basically, I push handles out here. Cool. Really open that one real quick. Like, oh, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. And gotcha. just gotcha. keep working it. He's the asset though. Welcome yeah, to Love the Lace Project. I was just telling them. Oh! <laughs> Put that one back. <laughs> Pretty and not as mean. Or oh, maybe I wow. Said too Look soon. at this. You gotta be kidding me. So, this is a white lace, yellow black clown, I believe. Oh my god. So, we're about to see what lace is really all about this year. I'm yeah, assuming. just crazy because white lace clowns are great, but adding yellow belly to it really, really brought up the orange yellow kind of saturation and so sides are just crazy. Dude, look at this. Cypress in the mix. So Summer, for everyone I'm wondering out there, you don't keep any ball pythons. Even though you surround yourself around these amazing ball pythons. Yeah. This, this, why would I? Yeah, if I right. can come here and have all this, why do I need them at my house? It would just kind of be a disappointment to go home. Stuff, um, but so this, also, is Cypress, this is Cypress Lace? Yes. Or, oh, wow. This is like, this is a world's Cypress, first, Cypress sure. Lace Yellow Belly Clown. Oh my gosh. Yeah, really, really awesome. And you can see the difference. Um, this is a regular right the lace just a lace clown right cypress lace Cy and then this has the yellow belly so it's just kind of seeing all the different so cypress lace clown cypress yellow belly lace clown. yep okay yeah a whole different ball game. yeah it's just crazy how they interact to kind of make everything so different and then we do kind of the other version of this which would be um without lace so this is just a cypress yellow belly clown and then you see what lace is doing to brighten that up and really make the yellows a lot cleaner. Black pastel, black head, confusion pie. Oh my gosh, this is nuts. Yeah, I love it. That head is so black. And then what is this stuff right here? Somewhere? This one is a leopard yellow belly confusion pie. And this one is a black pastel yellow belly suma pie. Or the Oreo snake. The Oreo right? snake, Oreo pie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, whose idea was it to put next to Oreos in the glass of milk? What? Guilty as charged. Okay. <laughs> ivory head clown. Wow. It's very bad. It's a breather. Also, you gotta respect that. Look at that, man. That thing is really purple. How long have, do you know these snakes? I mean, do you remember as a, like a, like since you were in diapers? I mean, how back does your memory go back with these snakes, do you feel like? To at least, to at least five. To at least five. So it's, it's just so yeah. normal to you, no? It's very normal. Yeah. People, like, are they in your house? So people ask, I'm like, I've never thought of that. No, <laughs> I've never. And how many clutches you could do on average with you and the world justice? So leopard, hypo, pride, pet, clown. 6 percent. Oh, wow. So you might shoot for maybe 250, 260, for whatever reason you want to look at that. This year I'm getting it for the first time. What is this one? Oh, oh yellow belly leopard pied pet DG clown. Do you ever see yourself investing into some triple recessive? And you can be honest, man. What what is your opinion when you see projects like this? I mean, is it overwhelming to you? Do you feel like you're in a good place and you'd rather not? I, I 
Just probably to be completely honest, I wouldn't. I think I'm a little late to the game, to be honest, to get involved in triple recessives. Um, but, you know, you come to a facility like this and you see these animals and it's uh, it's like being in an amusement park for me. Right. You know, it just, what is it? just come and just enjoy them. Everybody says it's so cliche, they're so much better in person. 100%. And then, then the pictures or videos. Videos don't do these justice at all. Can, can do them justice. Not even this so. facility. Like, you, I mean, you've seen vlogs of this facility for sure. And it's different when you walk in it, right? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely stunning. What do, you, what do you say to people who think they're too late to the triple recessive game or people feel like it's too late to get into something like you're in right now? You know, I mean, I would do it for you, first of all. And if you have the passion for it, there's so much time. There's so much far for it to go. All you need to do is hit one or two really cool animals and then you have your own thing going. It's hard to say. I mean, I know I'm really ahead. It can be very demoralizing for people, but shoot, when I got in, I was the pipsqueak and I was watching Ralph Davis and, you know, Brian Barch and these guys making craziness. And just a kid with the end, it, was, it wasn't too late for me. So right. that's all I can say. I don't want to ever discourage somebody from chasing their dreams, for sure. Is it too late for him to get into designer <laughs> condos, Phil? <laughs> Never too late. Yeah, yeah, Summer's killing it over here, by the way. Well, this one's courtesy of Shelby. Whoa, what is this one? Spot nose, red stripe, coral glow. Wow. Wow. That is intense. Head. Get this. Head, head sunset. Oh, heads. Okay, that, that makes sense. Because this thing looks popping. Look at that. It's wild. So Marshall, Marshall once said he would not trade Condros for ball pythons? A long time ago when I was first getting into Condros. Marshall Mendez was my mentor when I got wow. into green trees. Wow. Huge. And I utilized uh, Marshall because at the time, he was the only person I knew that was housing green trees and ball pythons together and being successful in producing Same, same cage. Right. Same cage. Same cage. Same yeah, same hybrids. Cage. hybrids. <laughs> So I utilized his formula a long time ago, and it's worked great ever since. But that's what he told me a long time ago. I don't trade Congress for ball pythons, but I yeah. think he's having yeah. maybe a change that, that, of heart. That was a couple years ago. But listen, I mean, there's always there's always one-offs, right? That's right. Do you feel like you're in a one-off situation I'm potentially? Sure. Of course. <laughs> How could you not? You know? So Gary, I have to ask you, I mean, you, you obviously are well more diverse in the arboreals and whatnot, and, and, and there are a couple of ball python projects that you dabbled with. Being in something like this, do you, would you ever consider taking on a, a triple or, or you know, quad recessive project if, if, if it made sense to you? God, yeah, I mean, I, I love them all. I just love every one of these animals. I, I love watching any, my favorite thing in life is to watch people who are just really good at what they do right. and do it well. Right. And it's, it's overwhelming how Justin has this whole thing organized. He just know I can mention any snake, he knows where to pull it from. And would I ever get into it? Yeah, thousand percent. I just, I would have to really sit down with somebody like him and give me a solid understanding because I don't even know where to start. I just, I just know I'm looking at a bunch of amazing, beautiful animals and I, I'm blown away. I Gary, really am. Gary, you're definitely somebody who gives credit when credit's due. So can I just give you mad credit on your YouTube channel? Oh. Can I just say how much it's inspired not only me, but just the most new person into the Boreals can take so much off your content. And I just want to say shout out to uh, you putting out stuff on YouTube. Thanks, Doing man, stuff man. different because you're not from that era, man. You're right. you're definitely I'm, tapping I'm, into something different. I'm trying to fit in with the younger guys. That's all I'm trying to do is fit in. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. And that was the goal. Yeah, just to treat, help people who are getting into it, make it a little less confusing for them. That's all. Oh, it looks like, yeah, it looks very much like DG. Very much. But it has a lot of the same edging patterning on the belly. Right? Oh, which oh, DGs okay. don't have any extra patterning of any type. Huh. Really, I really like this project. I, I mean, I was going to say, Justin, you've been pretty fired up about lace since I came yes. here last year, and yeah. you actually have some hatchlings. Probably lace. showing it, yeah. Right. I mean, how far are you as far as. Um, I mean, you've already exposed those hatchings on your YouTube or not yet? Yeah, we have. We've okay. tried, we got a couple major videos, yeah. So what would you feel like the future is moving next year with Lace? What are you looking to have Lace into moving next year? Honestly, we would do more in the Lace with the Desert Ghost. We're doubling up. You know, Lace is basically oh, wow. a code on DG. So if we can make more Lace Desert Ghosts combos, I think that's where we're going to get the ultimate and brightness and you know, you think good longevity. Tell, tell them apart pretty easily? Wow. Yes. Like, like the DG with Lace versus without? We have, we have one. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Bill Stiegel, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Bill man. fucking Stiegel. Oh, <laughs> so this baby, I am more excited about than I've been excited about babies in a while. Yeah. More Yeah. This thing. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see, the color on this thing is really blowing me away. Do 
see the back on that thing? Dude, oh, wow. Isn't that wild? Oh my God. Like orange? Yeah, it's just in the fade as it goes down the sides and like the whole snake is like... You have no idea what's influencing that? I have a pretty good idea, but I've never hit that wow. combo. Yeah, I did not know it would be that good either. So Inchi Hurricane Fire Yellow by Special Spot Nose. Wow. That's my guess. I mean, that's, that's the only thing I can really imagine would, would give it that full look. Because like you see all the different you know, ingredients that are in the flesh here. The different other... I guess the same thing without Spot Nose, in my opinion. So what was the pairing on this one, Tristan? So it was, the male was fire, yellow belly, special spot nose clown. Um, so four, basically a four coat on clown to an inchy hurricane hat. And special's a coat on, correct? Right. So what would, yeah. what would happen if you go special to special? Like what, is there it a makes super it super special, which is part of the blue Lucy complex, but it's not an all white snake. It's a mostly kind of white snake. So Justin, I know over lunch you said, or I think dinner last night, you said you're approaching your best year ever, correct? As far as numbers go, let's right. see if the, uh, the the odds bear it out. So how many questions are you looking at this year? I'm guessing 250. <laughs> Last previous best was 226 about four or five years ago. Two years so. ago. Two years ago? Yeah. Wow, look at the knowledge on this, this guy. This guy. He's my, he's my stats, stats man. 217 wow. was 2018. Yeah. 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 yeah, you definitely look like you're a baseball guy for sure. <laughs> Some real brains behind Canova here. <laughs> this secret's out. Encyclopedia, yeah. Did, did Canova Jr. pass you up on height yet? It looks like you guys are almost yeah. the same height. Well, he got me by a couple inches off. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Epic. Six four. Six. Already. And here we are. The Plan B property. What do you see? Emus right off the bat. Oh my God, look at them. Look at them running. Oh my God, it's amazing. Look at that. It's running. Yeah, it is so epic. Hi. Is it coming towards me? Where's it going? It's going. That was so cool. What's up? Hi. Hi. Dude, they're so prehistoric, man. This is amazing. <laughs> Are they breeding? Hi. Put your head. All right, you sure I'm not gonna get hurt? <laughs> you rascal took my eye out. Wow, that's a, is that a big nail? So, this is a code on imitation. So, the dark ones are natural, the middle ones are like this. Okay. This is the super. What's up, buddy? Okay. The funny thing is, the funny thing is, is that as soon as snakes, like you say, I knew exactly what's going on, but a lot of people I love these, bro. Right here. Dude, look at that one. That's a big one right there. Oh, oh, oh! E that was so sick. This one right here. I think this is the one running the show right here. Alright, so here we are on the uh, other property of Canova, which is off location in a different area. We are, have some amazing vegetation type shit going on, man. A lot of bioactive stuff, a lot of plants being grown in here, like exotic plants. You have coral reef being grown in here as well. Look how amazing it's all is. This is unreal. Crazy looking. A lot of cool stuff over here, man. This is all behind the scenes. Oh, little turtles, farm albinos. This is really neat, man. Angel 
catfish, mealworms. Oh, I've never seen how that's done. I've never even seen. Oh, that's crazy. Mealworms. Oh, these are beetles. Wow, what a trip. You guys are seeing this first hand like I am. This is nuts. I don't know what they are, but. I don't know which species. I think it's a white custard eggs. That's good, too. Thanks. So this is basically a spare building for you at the end of the day, right? Right, yeah, exactly. And, and lake. Oh. And everything. Welcome to the Canova Minor Leagues. This is it, building number two. Would it be disrespectful to call this like the, the Canova Minor Leagues? That's what I call it, no, Triple A. Oh, Triple A, yeah. perfect, all right, respect. But there were some major league hitters a part of this at one point, right? Like, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, so this will be there. Uh, so many room for activities. So you got, you got this. rooms and got speakers. So a lot, lot more room over here. You said what? There's speakers. You said. All right. Yeah. So you could have trap talk with MJ being played this whole like, during while you're doing your stuff. It's yeah. awesome. Wow, incubator. I'm assuming. I love these things, man. I have like I have one that I just kind of rigged up. So, uh, uh, I realized you get like the so how long have you had racks in this room for now? About a month. About a month? So yeah, pretty we're just, fresh. We're just making the transition slowly as things like stop and start laying at the other place. And so like the adults that you are ready to get rid of or, or, or they got better ones and you're going to keep it your house and just move the other ones exactly. like that. All right, guys. So before we actually end this vlog, I have some bonus footage I'm going to show you because on the second property of Canova here, there's a, a rodent company, okay, uh, Mice Direct. We're gonna check out this facility and how they breed their mice. Just prepare yourself, because this is next level. So we are inside the shipping center or the shipping department of this rodent facility here. Now keep in mind, in this facility, they only breed mice. So what you're about to see are racks only filled with mice. Here we go. What an awesome, awesome facility. All right, guys, that's all we have on this episode of the Snake Trap Sessions vlogs. I really hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording all this for you because this is so inspiring. It never fails. Anytime I come out to visit Justin, I am leaving with such a fire within me. I mean, look, I didn't get to see all, I didn't get to see emus last time I was here. Now I'm on a property full of emus. Before you guys leave, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you're on top of every single vlog I drop here on the Snake Drive Sessions Vlogs YouTube channel. But what do you think? Good times? All right, guys. Well, listen, I'll check you guys here next week for another Snake Drive Sessions Vlogs, and I'm out. Cheers! Thank you for watching this week's Snake Trap Sessions vlogs. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell that way you're on top of every single vlog that's released here on every Saturday. Please remember to subscribe to Trap Talk with MJ Podcast as well, and I'll catch you guys here next week. Cheers!